We welcome you to the Wisconsin State Fair Park, side of the historic Milwaukee Mile, and seen up today's second annual running of the Menard Infinity Pro Series Milwaukee 100. Along with IndyCar expert and analyst and former Milwaukee Mile pole sitter, Robbie Buell, I'm Jerry Punch. Glad to have you with us. And Robbie, this track, this tricky oval, long known as a driver's track, what makes it so tough for drivers? Well, it does. This track has very long corners and it's flat. So mechanically, it is very tough for these drivers to get the balance they want from the race car. That means they're never going to have the perfect car. That's where a driver's ability and willingness comes into play. This track is flat, fast, and fickle. Last year, it took three drivers out in turn one on lap one, so it can bite you in a hurry. With more on today's favorites, let's head down to the grid and Cameron Steele. One driver trying to avoid the chaos going into turn one is your pole setter, Jaime Camara. It's his third pole of the season. The last two times, he won the race. Something different for him, though, however, is his teammate, Travis Gregg, is not starting to the outside for the first time. This time, he has John Hurd, the only other winner on a short track so far this season. Also, starting behind him, your points leader, Wade Cunningham, always aggressive and very confident. It should be a shootout. Doc and Robbie, it's going to be a great race. Could be a good one, Cameron, here at the infamous uh, and historic Milwaukee Mile. As you mentioned, take a look at our starting lineup. Jaime Camara coming off a dominating performance at Nashville, Tennessee, alongside John Herb, best qualifying effort of the year with Herb in the aircon machine. Row two, a pair of Brian Stewart racing teammates, points leader Wade Cunningham, and Ari Leindijk Jr., who's getting oh so close to that very first win. Row three, Vision Racing teammates, Nick Bussell, the 2002 World Carded Triple Crown winner, and beside him, four-time USAC champion, Jay Drake. Row four, Jeff Simmons, making his 25th career start. The former two-time winner, finished second at Nashville, and beside him, rising sophomore at Florida State University, Chris Festa in the Space Pack Care-Centric Machine. Row five, Marty Roth and Scott Mayer, and row six, after having trouble in practice, Travis Gregg starts shotgun on the field. And the keys to this race, there are three simple keys. And one of them is, is for these guys to be able to go back to full throttle. When they go through the corner, they come off the gas. The sooner they can get back to full throttle, obviously, the faster they're going to be getting onto that straightaway. The next one is finesse the Firestones. Firestone finesse. What these guys need to do in this long 100-mile race in this heat is really be patient with how they use these tires. And then my favorites, the guys I've been hearing that really like their cars, is Jamie Camera, Wayne Cunningham, and Jeff Simmons. I think those are the guys we've got to keep our eyes on. All right, thank you very much, Robbie Buell. I mentioned former pole sitter, led a lot of laps at this racetrack over the years in Indy Lights and IndyCar competition. Flag, Here, green flag. Couldn't have said it better myself. They come down for the green flag in the air, three wide in turn one. Take a look at Wade Cunningham, the points leader, makes a move and takes the lead. Yeah, and that was a, a decisive move. That wasn't even close. He just timed that start beautifully, got inside those guys prior to even really getting into turn one. Cunningham gets the move inside of both Camera and Herb and takes the lead. And Jaime Camera didn't like that at all. He's going to hustle back up there and try to put some pressure on Wade Cunningham. It's still early in the race. It was good to see everybody get through turn one cleanly and sort themselves out. One guy we're looking at there in second place, John Herb. We said already, he's the one guy that led and won at Phoenix, our other one-mile track. But every time he's been on the track this weekend, he has gone out and immediately been on the pace and, and showed the pace. So he's got a lot of confidence in his race car. There's John Herb. You heard uh, Cameron say he won at the other short oval, won at Phoenix International Raceway, leading 69 of 90 laps. Here's a challenge for a third spot. Simmons on the inside. Very wide racetrack. Lots of racing room, and Simmons took advantage of it. Yeah, and look at look at Simmons wiggling right there in the red-white car. He made that pass on Jamie, carried some speed down into the middle, and uh, did a good job. That's what we talk about driver ability and driver willingness. You really got to drive the cars hard here, but you have to be patient as well in terms of managing those tires. Don't use them up early. John Herb came here and tested. He told me yesterday prior to qualifying as he takes the lead inside of Cunningham. And Woo! And he can't hang on. That's exactly what Jeff Simmons did that lap prior. What a great job of holding on to the race car. Well, what a nice job by the former IndyCar ace and now full-time driver here in the Menards Infinity Pro Series, John Herb. He said he came here and tested and used it. really got the car dialed in and didn't touch a thing when he came here to practice and qualify. That's how important that test session was. Yeah, and when you come to a race weekend and you don't make many changes to the race car through practice sessions, that means you got a pretty good race car underneath you, and that's just what he has. 
All right, lap five, and we've already had two leaders here uh, as John Herb went by Wade Cunningham for about 100 yards and then slipped and then Wade went back up front. The top five, Bustle. Oh, we have a yellow on the racetrack and a hard impact over in the corner. That is Scott Mayer, the uh, Franklin, Wisconsin native who has uh, come into contact with the concrete, the ABC Supply Company sponsored efforts out of the Sam Smith stable. Yeah, and that's, that's over in turn two. We haven't seen what's happened on on monitors yet, but hopefully we'll get a look at that and we can tell you more what happens. All right, we'll take a look when we come back. We're in the early laps here under yellow now due to an incident with Scott Mayer in turn two. Wade Cunningham is our leader. Getting set for a restart here under yellow for the first time of the afternoon. The uh, Milwaukee 100 here at the Milwaukee Mile. Menards Infinity Pro Series action moments ago. Coming off turn two, this incident brought out the yellow. Yeah, and that's Scott Mayer that's coming off a of turn two. Obviously, the rear just comes around, and he backs in. And we saw earlier where two guys struggled with the mid-corner of one and two. And uh, it takes a, takes a driver. Okay, here we go. This is the original start of the race here moments ago. Watch the move by the third place car in turn one. Wade Cunningham wasting no time. Yeah, and he timed that start beautifully. I mean, he had the guy, he was by our pole sitter by the time they got down into turn one. He has held on for the first 10 laps, and now we're in the restart here. Lap 11 of 100, and Cunningham says, see, I'm pulling away by about eight car lengths entering one. Yeah, and we just talked about how well he timed the start of the race. He timed that restart beautifully. Got again the leader, John Herb, Simmons, Kamara, and Bustle, the top five. Lion Dyke, Festa, Drake, Greg, and Marty Roth. That's the top ten. And here's a move inside by Festa trying to take a spot away. Yeah, looking down the inside of his teammate, our pole sitter, Jamie Kamara, and he's not getting it done as they come off the four. Johnny Kamara, who won last week and also won on Indianapolis, has a mentor who's standing by with Cameron Steele. Well, they've been training together, working together, and Tony Kanan, you've been giving him advice and helping him out. We saw you come running out during the start of the race. Is there anything you can tell us what's happening with Jaime right now? It sounds like he's fighting an understeer. I think he's fighting a little bit of understeer, and, uh, you know, the kid is learning a lot. And uh, I told him uh, just to use his head. He needs the miles. So uh, if he didn't have a car to win to stay where he is, and uh, I guess it's just experience. He's got to learn how to run in traffic a little bit. And... Uh, this is the best way to be back there to learn how to, to run. And uh, he, he's done a great job. I'm pretty pleased with his performance so far. So he definitely got a lot to learn, though. All right. Thanks so much, Tony. The ladder series for the Menards Infinity Pro Series. And you can see the drivers of the IRL coaching along. Battle up front waging. Jeff Simmons finally gets by. He's been hounding on the backside of Wade Cunningham. Cunningham's been our leader since lap one when he made that daring pass. And now Jeff Simmons takes the lead and this is the first lap that Jeff Simmons has led all year long. Simmons a former two-time winner back in 2003 won in back-to-back -back weeks at St. Louis and Kentucky also a pole center at Pikes Peak finally leads his first laps here in 2005 and he has come so far after having such horrible luck early in the year. Yeah, Horrible luck is probably the understatement but he had his best finish too Nashville last race ago where he finished second so you got to gain that momentum here's the pass Artie Roth up high cutting him in the middle and Simmons makes the pass on the inside yeah and he's alongside of Wade they're side by side as they go into there it's his corner Wade can't do anything he can't come down when there's a car on in the inside of him. it was a good clean classic pass Jeff Simmons a two-time Barber uh, Dodge uh, Pro Series champion the only driver ever to win it two consecutive years in a row and he says this track reminds him a lot of a road course because of that road course uh, kind of driving ability that it requires. You were awfully good here. Is that accurate? Absolutely. You know, drivers love this track. It is a driver's track. You have give and take, and you got to hustle the car. But it's also very important to know what you're inducing in that car as a driver just by what your style is versus what the car is really, really giving you. But to separate those two things, that, that's what makes a good driver, and it makes you able to tune on the race car to make it better. Well, we're a third of the way home, and a 28-year-old driver from Hartford, Connecticut, the Boston College graduate, has finally led his first lap. Jeff Simmons, our leader at Milwaukee.
Second Milwaukee under yellow for the second time today. A hard impact into the turn two wall by 19-year-old rookie Chris Festa. Let's take a look.
The historic Milwaukee Mile. It is a driver's track. It separates the men from the boys. It basically rewards talent and unveils some of the weaknesses drivers may have. This is exactly what the Menard Infinity Pro Series is all about, and this series is indeed grooming the future IndyCar stars. Let's check in with the man who's worked so hard to make this series work, the executive director, Roger Bailey, standing by with Cameron Steele. Well, Roger, I assume this is exactly what you envisioned, the training ground for the Indy Racing League. Great race here today. You must be so proud. But what are you proudest about with this series? I think the thing that we... Uh that we're proud about right now is stuff that you don't see. The number of young people that are uh, coming into the series. I mean, right now, the average age is probably in the low 20s. I think over the last three years, we've had all kinds of people come and go, some older, some younger, but we're getting the average age now to where we want to be. We want them to get into the low 20s. The kids are going to move from here up into the Indy racing car. Uh, uh, up into IndyCar, and I think the things I'm most proud of right now is stuff that you're not seeing on the racetrack, although I'm delighted to see racing for the lead like this. Well, thank you so much, Roger. Great race going on today. We'll see if one of these two teams can be a first-time winner here in Milwaukee. Thank you very much. Roger Bailey helped launch the Indy Light Series in the mid-'80s. with their 16 years ago. Now come over here for Tony George to bring the Menards Infinity Pro Series where it has gotten so quickly today. Final laps here at the Milwaukee Mile. Can Wade Cunningham hang on? Jeff Simmons behind him. They go by the lap car of Marty Raw. Yeah, and that also is the team car of Wade, Ari Leyendike, who's been struggling with this car. He just stayed low and let these guys race. Here goes, there, here goes there Simmons on the inside. Sorry to interrupt you there, Robbie, but Simmons makes the pass with three laps to go. Outstanding. I couldn't have said it better myself. That was an outstanding move by Jeff Simmons. Yeah, and, and we saw it the last 10 laps. Jeff had probably a faster race car. It was just a matter of when he was going to have an opportunity to get by Wade. And just that little bit of traffic, Wade probably just had to slow up a little bit, couldn't get back to power as just as soon as he wanted to, and that creates a gap. Jeff Simmons, who had four DNFs in the last 10 events prior to going to Nashville last week and pulling off the runner-up finish. Ken Hardley has raced in 30 six events as an owner in Menard Infinity Pro Series competition has never gone to victory lane. What a job if they can hold on. Dave Conti, Mark Moore of the engineers, Butch Winkle, the chief mechanic who's worked so very, very hard on the team ISI machine for Ken Hartley Racing. Final lap, one mile away. The great names that have won here over the years, Mario and Michael Andretti, John Cock, Mears, the legendary Texan, A.J. Foy. And we're about to add another one here at the Milwaukee Mile. Coming out of turn four is Jeff Simmons. And they're going to get it. There you go. Well, congratulations. Jeff's third win, your first ever on this series. It's got to be a great moment. It's been a long four years. Uh, we've been close a number of times. We've had polls, we've had seconds, but this is awesome. This is a great experience. Right on. Well, it's time to celebrate. We're going to head down to victory lane, but right now, back up to you, Doc. True emotion for Ken Hartley, one of the real nice guys in this business. And no, nice guys don't have to finish last. Jeff Simmons heads to victory lane, and so does Ken Hartley for the first time. Unofficial final results of the Milwaukee 100. Jeff Simmons, Wade Cunningham, Nick Bussell, John Herb, and Jaime Comer on the top five. And by the way, Chris Fessel at Hard Impact. He has been released from the Infield Care Center. He is okay. Let's check in down in victory lane where Cameron Steele is standing by with our winner. All right, Jeff Simmons coming out of the car. Going to be elated. I'm sure it's been almost two years since Kentucky of 03 since his last win. And Jeff, congratulations. I hear a lot of people telling you, smart race. You really had to do a lot of thinking out there, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, we uh, we had a good race car. You know, it was good, uh, I think, as good as everybody else did. And and once I got the lead there, I was just kind of stretching it out. And I was I knew I had a little bit left, but, um, you know, at the end, we had a little bit of a problem uh, picking up fuel or something on that restart. And that's how Wade drove by me. I mean, it, it didn't clear out for a lap and a half. And uh, then I knew I had my workout out for me because it's so hard to pass here. You got to try to get underneath them and, uh, and try to stick a wing under there so you can get a little bit of air. But stayed patient and uh, I couldn't be happier for Ken Hardley and Team, I Team ISI. Congratulations, Jeff, Doc, an awesome job by Jeff Simmons in his 25th start in the Menards Infinity Pro Series.
Simmons takes the victory. Ken Hartley, what a day. Great short track racing, Robbie. Fantastic racing, and what a shot in the arm for Jeff Simmons and Ken Hartley racing. Those guys needed it. Congratulations. We invite you to join us next from the picture picturesque Kentucky Speedway. Airtime for our telecast Thursday, August 18th, 5 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN2. Once again, congratulations, Jeff Simmons, and so long from Milwaukee.